wine. And believe it or not, tea and coffee are good for you. So wine, tea, chocolate, and coffee. Great diet. Great diet. So I think there's nothing that... So again, one in three women die from heart disease. Again, my favorite little experiment is look to your left, look to your right, one of you will have heart disease. And you think about it, in every 35 seconds, okay, so think how many minutes are in this talk, how many people are going to die of heart disease? So one person dies in this country every 35 seconds. So pretty shocking. So I'm going to talk about the first part of my diet that, I all re that I'm recommending for everyone. So we're talking about chocolate, wine, tea, and coffee. Chocolate. What kind of chocolate? Dark chocolate. We're, I have two examples. This is Belgian chocolate, 72% cocoa. Ghirardelli chocolate, this is also another option. It's the super dark chocolate. Snickers doesn't count. We don't want you to have milk chocolate. What does the dark chocolate do? And we're talking half an ounce, not a whole, not a whole lot, but this is going to be good for you to have as a little something at night. It actually prevents platelets from clumping together. Platelets clumping together causes a heart attack. Heart attacks cause sudden death. We want to cut back on platelets clumping together. Cholesterol oxidizing or rusting your pipes, your arteries, it prevents that from happening. It lowers your blood pressure. And it decreases your risk of stroke. Half an ounce of chocolate. How many are going out and getting a nice bag of this Ghirardelli chocolate or a little bit of Belgian chocolate? I'm partial to Belgian chocolate. Go out there and get some Belgian chocolate. Now, what am I talking about oxidizing the arteries or preventing or rust proofing those arteries? You see here, this is a normal, healthy artery. And this is as we go through our lifetime, you start getting cholesterol buildup in the artery. Okay? And if I told you you could rust proof those arteries or prevent that stuff from getting into your arteries. We don't want the plaque to get into the arteries and we certainly don't want it to go all the way where the platelets pluck up together and cause a heart attack. And so these things I'm talking about prevent that oxidation or prevent rust proof your arteries. How many people in here know someone who's had a heart attack? Okay, so everybody, so there's no reason for you to get to that point. I kind of like the idea of olive oil, but it turns out one bar of chocolate is equal to olive oil. It has the same benefits. So if you're not into the olive oil or you want to cut back on some of the calories, a little piece of chocolate goes a long way. But it's the same benefit as having olive oil. Believe it or not, cocoa butter although it has some saturated fat, does not raise your cholesterol. The fat in chocolate, this stearic acid, actually acts, acts like the monounsaturated fat in olive oil by preventing plaque formation, lowering your blood pressure, and preventing the platelets from sticking together. Dark chocolate can also raise your good cholesterol. Remember we said H was for healthy, healthy HDL. And that can actually increase your HDL, one of the very few things that does that. We talked a little bit before about good cholesterol, H, or healthy HDL. Want to be high. You want HDL to be high. And LDL, or bad cholesterol, is the lousy cholesterol or the lethal cholesterol, and you want that to be low. Triglycerides, whenever someone tells me they're watching their diet and they have high triglycerides, I'm always a little skeptical. When you have a diet that's high in carbohydrates, bread, rice, potatoes, pasta, sugar, that is what's going to be affected first, is your triglycerides. The minute you cut back on the carbs and eat a little healthier, that's the first thing that changes in the cholesterol level. So again, when you want to lower that, you can take fish oil, you can take other medications, or you can really watch the carbs. What about the science of chocolate? Well, it actually turns out that chocolate 
has a lot of things that it stimulates. So the first thing is it's actually related to caffeine and the anti-asthma drug theophylline. So it can actually dilate your bronchial tubes. So you get a nice good breath. So if you're an asthmatic or you have problems breathing, chocolate is a good thing. Turns out it also has another substance, phenylethylamine, which increase, increases endorphins and it acts on the brain in the very same way as if you're in love. It has that same good feeling as if you're in love. Most of us can remember back there, but if you're in love and you have that good feeling, that's the endorphins that chocolate can raise. Last thing is that there's a substance in chocolate which actually binds to the same site as cannabinoids. Anyone know what cannabinoids are? So, um, also known as marijuana. So it actually binds to the same receptors as cannabinoids. So if you're interested in a really feel-good feeling, a little bit of dark chocolate. I actually came across this. This is Zokai, I'm not really a person who promotes anybody else's, you know, kind of things, but it, apparently this is, has the highest levels of antioxidants of any chocolate. So if you're going for the real antioxidants, this Zokai, X-O-C-A-I, it's the uh, acai berry and it's chocolate, and the reason it's so high is because it is cold processed as opposed to most chocolate, which is heat processed. So this is actually a great antioxidant. If you're looking to put some antioxidants in your diet, they have a whole line of uh, ideas. You go to their website, they've got liquids, they've got solids, they've got all kinds of things. So again, kind of an interesting thing, thing in terms of the berries and the chocolate. Janet, what do you think about this, uh, the whole acai berry and... Um, Mm -hmm. Because I think you can get some great antioxidants from just uh, blueberries in the supermarket. Okay. So um, I, I think that the processing is very important with the chocolate, so that's a good point. Mm -hmm. And one thing you want to make sure is that you put back any chocolate that you see with the alkali or processed with alkali because that destroys the antioxidants. And there's quite a few chocolates out there that are processed with alkali. So, and it's also called Dutch processing. And you do not want chocolate with Dutch, that's Dutch process. So that, so look for that word alkali, put it back, and you'll be surprised at how many candy bars and how much chocolate uh, is out there that has been processed in that manner. So that's not good. But the best thing that you can do, the, the, the um, at the supermarkets, the best, the highest amount of, of antioxidants is proven in the natural, unsweetened cocoa powder. So that's a really good thing to do, is to make your own chocolate with that, and then add in a little splenda, and mix it up maybe with some soy milk, or cook with that, as opposed to buying the bars, because then you're getting all the antioxidants without the calories and the saturated fat. The other thing is, milk chocolate is a no-no. Milk chocolate has butter fat in it. So that's not the kind that you want to have, even though we kind of love that. The highest amount that you can go in terms of percentage dark chocolate is actually better for you. And again, half an ounce. We don't want to, we don't want to be starting to eat a big bar like this for dessert. On the other hand, a little bit is going to be healthy. Ah, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. I was told by my nutritionist that the dried fruit would continue to raise my triglycerides. So, dr so dried fruit has a lot of sugar, um, but it's actually still, you know, and the more things you start mixing in the chocolate, more problematic. But if you have a handful of raisins or a handful of cranberries, um, then I think that that would be still a good thing. Um, when you start adding nuts, and you start adding in other kinds of things that they're putting in there, you definitely cut back on some of the benefits and you actually add a lot of calories. Yes? Are the dried fruits like really add sugar to it? 
Yeah. Sugars, they, because they're, very they're very concentrated, so you're going to be adding sugar. If you've ever had raisins or cran craisins or things like that, you know that those are sweet. Those are sugary. A little tiny bit goes a long way. What what your comments on this on dried fruit? One of the things I think is a helpful thing is if you have a jar of, uh, at your desk or in your house that, that you want to have as a snack, you take a bunch of walnuts, you throw a few craisins in, and you grab a snack with something that's going to be really healthy. So I, I like to do that in the house. Um, some unsalted almonds or some walnuts or both, and you mix it in with some raisins or craisins, and you've got a great perfect snack. Fresh fruits are great. Then you're unusual. So um, I hope everyone had a little bit of um, the wine. I particularly, I, I can't tell you that I actually did this from any knowledge, but the sparkling wine was actually fantastic. So if you want to try a little bit of that, there's a few different kinds out there. What is a drink? Right, we heard one drink for women, two drinks for men. Higher than one drink can actually increase your risk of breast cancer. So you, you want to be a little bit careful if you're a woman how much alcohol you drink. But what is a drink? So it's a 12-ounce beer. It's um, a shot glass or uh, 1.5 ounces of a liquor. Or it's 5 ounces of wine. So again, kind of keep that in mind, how much you're drinking. When you say, I have two drinks of wine, if you've got a big... Uh, uh, you know, red wine and you're filling it to the top, it's a little bit more than five ounces. So again, just a little bit and you want to kind of keep a track on this. But that's what a drink is. What's in red wine? Red wine contains something called polyphenols. Polyphenols. And again, remember that's an antioxidant. What does it do? It actually releases a substance called nitric oxide. Some of you may know nitric oxide. There's actually medications that increase nitric oxide, some of them being such a thing as Viagra or Cialis. That was a whole nitric oxide discovery. So nitric oxide actually enlarges blood vessels. I mean, you can imagine why Viagra would want to enlarge blood vessels. So again, <laughs> enlarges blood vessels. Nitric oxide is a great substance. It blocks blood clots and it increases your good cholesterol. These polyphenols are found in things like olive oil, in wine, in chocolate, in soy. These are all the things that we've been saying most of this day in terms of the Mediterranean diet. We want to get those polyphenols. Is there any substance behind this? Or is this just somebody decided that red wine is a good thing? Actually, it started with a study called the Health Professionals Follow-Up Study. This is a study that they looked at more than 38,000 male professionals, one to two drinks a day. Drinking that much reduced your risk of a heart attack by 30%, reduced your risk of a stroke by 20%. One-third, a decreased risk of one-third. Well, what about men and women? So this is from Copenhagen. 13,000 men and women, they decreased their risk in half. Now, how, how many people can remember how much are we spending on heart health? On $200 billion. So if I wrote a, a note to Mr. Obama and I said, President Obama, I can cut your risk in half of what we're spending for heart disease, $100 billion in my back pocket, and I said, cheers, uh, I think that that would be a great idea. <laughs> Good luck with that. Um, decreasing your risk of heart disease and stroke with wine but it didn't show any benefit with beer or liquor. Okay, so this is again wine. And some people say, well, is it red wine? Is it white wine? So they took a look at all, part, in 13 studies, all these people who participated in these trials, over 200,000 people, 32% decrease with red wine, 22% decrease the risk of heart disease with beer. So even in patients with diabetes. So even if you're diabetic, you can have a little bit of wine and it's for your heart. 
And why is it? Because the red wine has something called resveratrol. Resveratrol is a, is a, it's a, um, it's a complex which in mice studies seems to pre prevent diabetes, heart disease, and obesity. They're trying to manufacture this. There's actually some substances that have included resveratrol in them, but this seems to be the benefit of red wine. What about tea? I love tea. And actually, my husband and I drink a decent amount of tea per day, but green tea seems to be the most beneficial. Black tea is really good, but it actually improves your blood vessel function within 30 minutes. So I guess from now on, we should be telling patients when you feel chest pain, in addition to calling 911 and taking an aspirin, brew a cup of tea, because it might be helpful. They actually did an ultrasound study, and at 30 minutes, you actually see improvement in your blood vessel flow. So isn't that amazing with tea? Yeah. Drink, tea drink tea before you exercise. That's a great idea. So again, a little bit of tea, and it's got powerful antioxidants in tea, the same as in the dark chocolate, the wine, and actually red grapes. They're actually another good thing. Decaf tea is great, especially if you have palpitations. You don't want all the caffeine. You just want the antioxidants. So again, if you're someone who gets heart flutters, you, you want to sleep at night. OK, that's a good thing, too. Um, it's actually especially nice if you can have it in a, a pretty Wedgwood cup. And uh, <laughs> this actually promotes your benefit there, but again, um, these are two very pretty examples of Wedgwood cups. And um, this was a study of uh, about 37,000 Dutch people over 13 years. If you drank three to six cups of tea, it actually reduced your risk of heart disease by almost half. Coffee drinkers had a little benefit, but not as much as tea. And the tea in this study did not reduce your risk of stroke. So that's actually a little bit more with the red wine and chocolate. So um, this is actually, a, a, a colleague gave me this. This is actually a picture of a ruptured plaque. And that's a, obviously a microscope study. But in Texas, they have something called a Texas taco. And a Texas taco, he put it on, and this is like a rolled up kind of wrap with sausage and eggs. And he thought that it looked the same as this <laughs> blood vessel that had a rupture of obviously someone who did not live because we have a picture on a microscope. So he thought that the Texas taco looked a little bit like the ruptured plaque in your aorta. And if you say you are what you eat, then this is a clear example of that. So um, don't eat this stuff. And um, how many people know about Go Red? How many people would like to sign up for Go Red? Oh. <laughs> There's some cards outside where you can get some information. Go Red. Go Red is the movement for, from the American Heart Association that says that we need to increase awareness among everyone, men and women, for heart disease. We wear these little red dress pens. The red dress is the um, campaign motto of the American Heart Association for increasing awareness of heart disease in women. 75% of healthcare decisions are made by women. We make the decisions often for our parents, our in-laws, our husbands, our kids, even our pets. So um, if you have an increased awareness, like you saw in that first video, I can't possibly be having a heart attack, then, then you understand that women actually do get heart disease. And it would surprise you how many women, young women, have heart disease and stroke and are survivors.